Hey everybody, welcome to the July 26th, 2022 edition of PW Torch Presents the Daily Newswire. I'm your host, Tyler Sage, at Righam Tyler. Any news going on right now? <laughs> uh, obviously, lots going on in the world, so I'll be quick tonight as there will probably be more news to hit as I record this, but thank you as always for watching. Please like, subscribe, tell a friend, tell an enemy. Tell whoever you want about us here at PW Torch on YouTube. Appreciate you guys. You're really helping with some organic growth and uh, excited to watch SummerSlam with you this Saturday. So let's get right into it. So um, I think the most tangible, non biased thing we can talk about first is the raw rating from last night. On average, it was 1.9 uh, million. So 1,900,000 people on average. Obviously, our one two, and then three in that order were the most viewed. So 2.02, one, nine, one in front of me, and then like one, eight, seven for those three hours, one, two, three. So also did a 0.50 in the 1849 demo. Both are up compared to last week. Is that a morbid curiosity to see if there would be any changes? How many times someone would run in and say wrestler, belt, strap, fans, wrestler, um, hospital, did I say hospital? All that stuff. So We'll see, I think, next week, week three, week four, much more indicative, especially not post-SummerSlam, something big happens there. Look for the Raw after next to be a barometer for kind of the intermediate rating for Raw. So TBD there, um, or TBC, to be continued. Um, there's some more, as you would think, Fightful.com, so please check them out. They reported this first. Um, they reported that members of the creative team for a long time now have edited the notes of creative team meetings to protect uh, Vince McMahon. Uh, I mean, there's no really other way around it. You can go read the report, but they are alleging that um, McMahon would say things that are not societally appropriate about people, um, kind of left it in the air, but you can assume it might be based on gender, race, religion, sexual orientation, all that stuff um, is what I'm guessing. But again, I'm not privy to those comments. I did not see the edits. So keep that in mind. But um, yeah, and he also forgot people's names, et cetera. I forget people's names, so I understand that. But <laughs> the other stuff i um, trying not to do, obviously, for everybody out there is a good life lesson. Sometimes it's it's hard to remember people's names, so I won't put that against anybody, but the other stuff I will, so you're on notice. But look for more of this type of stuff to come out. Not a shock to me, probably not a shock to you, but I think the floodgates will continue to open slowly but surely about the, uh, the disconcern that people have for Vince, and probably most people are waiting to make sure he's out completely before they totally bury him. Um, but it is coming, I would imagine. The interpersonal stuff with McMahon is, uh, is not positive. So there you go. Uh, if you've not been listening to Wade's VIP, um, Ask the Editor Hotlines, or his focus on WWE stuff this past weekend, you know, finish this video. There's only a couple more minutes left. But then go listen to that stuff. Wade's done a really good job uh, reporting facts, reporting uh, for primary accounts of, of the situation what he thinks is going on, what he does not know for sure, and not just going out there and making things up. So as always, um, Wade Keller, a grade-A journalist in this cesspool that is wrestling journalism, and I'm not a journalist, so don't put that on me because uh, I say allegedly and give you my opinion. That's my job. But anyway, reported Triple H um, gave speech to the wrestlers and uh, – other staff last night at, at Raw. Please go listen to Wade to, to get a breakdown there, but that's now being reported at other places. But I heard it, Wade report it first um, last night on the pod, at least for me. So go listen to that, give you some more granular detail. Not, you know, hey, we're going to change everything up, but a little bit more, you know, like, like he's been saying, kind of stay the course and then slowly build out his vision, Stephanie's visions for what WWE will be going forward. Um, and then lastly, so this is the last thing, but I'm going to give you a standings update for the G1 if you're not watching. So if you don't want to see that, put me on mute and let the video play so we get all the views that we can. I appreciate that. But um, yeah, so if you didn't know this year, there's four blocks instead of two. 
typically there's two 10 person blocks. The winner of a and B have one match in the final to determine the winner. This is obviously going to be different. A, B, C, and D. The, the winners of each will go to a semifinal to then go to the final. So as of now, um, Group A, the leader, is Kazuchika Okada with four points. He's the sole person in the lead in that group. Group B, Jay White, uh, the current IWGP heavyweight champion, is also solo in the lead with four points. Group C, Zack Sabre Jr., is solo in the lead with four points in his group. And Group D is a total free-for-all. Everybody's got two points except for Yoshihashi. So I know lots of people... Um, we'll be disappointed by that, but that's the wide open group that has been, uh, will continue to probably be fun till the very end. So there's your G1 update on the standings and uh, almost certainly whoever's in lead, you know, maybe one of the four guys in the lead right now will win their group. Maybe two, because Uchiko Okada, Zack Sabre Jr. Will probably be my guess. Everything else is probably up in the air. Um, so keep an eye on that. It's been a great tournament so far. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining me today. And uh, I will see you guys later.